Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. You have been taught that businessmen don't pray, they just think. But the formula designed for your own advancement, because of the field wherein you have found yourself, you will pray as if you're a prayer warrior and yet you're a businessman. It is a strategy for your victory. Flexibility. 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 Discernment. The Bible says, and of the sons of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. As a result, the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. I always want to make reference, respectfully speaking, about 10, maybe 15 years or so ago, the Lord spoke to me. I, I shared this with, with every sense of responsibility. And he told me that the next decade of the church as a den, that it would not just be by sales of tapes and CDs. I remember. And he said to take our audio materials as raw as it is and to put it in the internet through the social media platforms in their infancy. Not the best of production. But he said, my angel will take it to the nations. And this is how our announcement you the flexibility to do it for someone God is following an unusual path with you just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong did you hear what I said just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong mm. Just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong. This is a word for someone. Just because you are alone, alone in prayer, alone in giving, alone in the sacrifice. Everybody has gotten a job except you. Just because you are alone, they don't know what you are confronting. There are age long altars that have vowed that nobody rises and God is submitting you. Do you know there are many things that God calls us to do that in doing them the benefit is beyond ourselves. He's, you are looking through the loins of prophecy and you are seeing your children and your children's children and he's saying for their sake go on the fast for their sake build capacity Elijah you are a prophet but eat the journey is far you'd have no idea where you are going he ate a little and he slept he woke him again he said eat it means pray it means study it means get knowledge it means build the relationships now you don't know how far you are going you may not have the luxury of this man you are seeing now invest in relationships invest in prayer a time will come the demand of the nations upon you you will not even have time to stretch as much as you used to you will drink from the residue of your investment This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where my life is changed. Listen, I will share with you something to bless your heart. Do you know how I finally settled here in Abuja? For three years, God began to speak to me that the season, a dimension of my ministry and my work was coming to an end. And for three years, I didn't know whether it was Abuja, whether it was just, I just kept praying. That dissatisfaction. I loved Zaria with all my heart. I was used to that. I mean, people were coming literally from all over the world. It was at a point of ministry excellence and results like you have not seen. And yet God was saying, this is just a layer. There is another layer. Remember ye not the former things. You can like yesterday too much. You will lose tomorrow because of yesterday. Listen, 
I returned back from, I think, South Africa, had a meeting in Lagos. COVID was just about to start. Now, Abuja has always been second home, but not for ministry. I didn't know whether I was Abuja, whether it was, it was just perhaps maybe among my people to just go. But where I, it was just in my heart. I knew I was having visions. They were not yet clear. You don't, it does not become clear from the beginning. It is not an unusual experience you are having. That's how we all pass through it. Anybody who understands building prophetic destiny, anything that comes with clarity from beginning is a sign that you are in error. God will always demand faith. There is a sign to that vision that will be hidden. It's your commitment that will cause him to unravel it. God is a God that hides himself in light. He will give you an experience and hide it back to draw you. Moses, he sees a bush that is burning but not consumed and yet it does not have any sound and then he says, I will turn aside and see this great sight and when God saw that he now turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes. It's not about the burning bush. There is more but I needed to use it to get your attention. Hallelujah. Please play the strings for me. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm teaching you by the Spirit of God, I'm giving you a compass to navigate the days that are now before us because there will be a divergence. Respectfully speaking, you will find out that many, many lampstands will suddenly go down and then others from nowhere. Yet there are those that will remain burning because of the intelligence to discern and to navigate prophetic seasons. Just because you were greatly demanded of and for yesterday does not mean the demand will remain tomorrow. The sustainability of impact in the kingdom is predicated upon your ability to discern seasons. He made lights and those lights were for seasons and for years. Discernment. I remember I returned from Lagos and then I left for London. We were about the last set of people to leave London. As I came to Abuja, I think preparing to rush back to Zaria for a miracle service or somewhere, that was when they announced the lockdown, the global lockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, that lockdown you see, that was it all. I said, no, there has to be a reason. Lord, what am I going to do with myself now? If I had left, I was considering using another flight. I would have been trapped in London for three months, roaming around the streets of London. But then God brought me. And as soon as I came, I know that God is a God of purpose. And I just said, okay, my people, God bless you. When COVID is over, we'll have our time. It was that time. Finally, Lord, is it Abuja? Is it, is it just? Is it where? And I was praying and the spirit of prayer came upon me. And it was at that time I just saw the map of Abuja. I said, that is it. The Lord instructed me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. I got these four maps and I was praying like a madman. Do you have the discernment and the flexibility to receive the prophetic blueprint for the next level? Which venue would be used? That one is another story. Where the people will come from, that is another story. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. I began to pray, laying hands on those maps every day, praying. Lord, when you give the word, great is the company of them that publish it. I may not see the wind, I may not see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. Mine is to pray, mine is to prepare. The Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. Holy Spirit, this is what you are meant for. Now I yield myself to you. Direct the course of my life. When you see any man looking like a sign and a wonder, let me tell you, they have only learned how to move with the wind. The Bible says the wind blows where it listed you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming for somebody God can just call you you have been fasting for every day but that one day fast is where the blueprint of your destiny will be revealed but do you have the flexibility the flexibility 
the flexibility it was time to turn water to wine the bible says the wine finished and then they came mary led them to jesus watch this and jesus said are you sure you really want new wine yes we want new wine embarrassment is imminent he said all right be ready to do what you've never done get six pots never has wine been formed that way no wine is formed through fermentation is that true and now he's using another formula and then they filled six pots he said fetch it don't taste it don't verify just be on your way the bible says as they went in shame what if nothing happened do you know they would have killed them at that point in a fierce embarrassment is there you now come and add to it but as they went in the foolishness of obedience a miracle began to happen the bible says when the rulers tasted it they said ah what is this people bring their best wine at first that means there is a kind of wine the church has not tasted ah, there is a kind we, we thank god for our fathers we thank god for generals both in the bible and in history but i assure you by the authority of scripture there is a kind of wine that must be tasted before his majesty returns and there are men and women ordinary men ordinary psalmists ordinary prophets ordinary apostles ordinary businessmen listen we don't know how to make wine but we know how to carry it ah we can carry it to nations we are not the ones making the wine but we can carry the wine we can carry the wine we can carry it to nations we can carry it across the globe and no power in existence sustains what it takes to stop the transference of that wine the wine is not from us we are not manufacturers of wine we only take it to the rulers of the earth this is the place of surrender do to me what you want this is the place of encounter do to me what you want this is the place where my life is changed do to me what you want hear me when you read john chapter 2 and verse 11 it leaves us with a powerful statement it says this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him what was the miracle to find ordinary men who started with water and then as they went the water turned to wine and they served the nations you would think the credit will go to the men of god i say it again every wine you taste that is unusual was not manufactured by joshua selman was not manufactured by koinonia the songs that you hear men and women like minister dunsin sing it we don't manufacture them we only take them as and serve them to the nations the formula listen the formula when it has to do with working with God creativity is not required it is alignment and obedience it is when we have to do with invading the cosmos that is when we bring creativity when it has to do with God your creativity is not important it is your alignment and your obedience then when you receive from his presence you now add creativity to that which you have received hallelujah behold I do a new thing you want to navigate prophetic seasons in your life you must understand the power of the new the first key is discernment and flexibility let me give you the second very quickly the second key when you want to experience new things in your life is that you will need strength and courage strength and courage <laughs> Joshua chapter 1 please 5 to 7 strength and courage 
there is nobody who is able to explore virgin dimensions in the spirit and become men of power and stature when you do not understand strength and courage Joshua 1 5 to 7 1 5 to 7 1 5 to 7 thank you there shall not any man be able to stand before thee speaking to Joshua all the days of your life I hope you know he had never assumed leadership in this capacity the Bible starts by saying Moses my servant is dead get over it I love Moses I use Moses but that formula is dead good things can die it's not only evil that can die God is a God of evolution and transition as far as his work with the saints is concerned there are many good things he may need to shelve because there are greater things coming it is not only evil or bad things that are thrown aside as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake you verse 6 he says be strong he's speaking to a man who is about to assume enormous office a, 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 an office that would demand I mean the continuity the manifestation of prophecy depend on his leadership and yeah he's speaking to the people no idea of the battles that were before him and Joshua was told to be strong and of a good courage for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance I hope you know the inheritance is talking about hard giants there and yet God did not even he was talking as if the giants were already dead share the inheritance which I swear unto the fathers to give you seven only be thou strong and if and very courageous be strong be very courageous can I tell you men who will understand navigate and excel as far as the prophetic shift that is happening is concerned are people who have strength strength and courage courage to stand alone courage to be controversial <clears throat> you cannot be agreeable and step into prophecy hallelujah he comes to meet a young lady minding her business preparing for her marriage and he says young lady you have found favor with God blessed are you among all women you would think after that blessing she should be announced she should be he called it favor I've studied Mary's life from that journey until Jesus have I still don't know what is favor in that statement I understand giving birth to Jesus but the controversies that surrounded Mary from that time Joseph wanted to quietly leave her she was about to lose her marriage lose her life and yet God calls that favor so pain can be favor there are moments that it does not look like it and yet God calls it favor be careful what you call what what is happening to you ask God for the name to use for it because you can see pain that is a ladder for your ascendance and you call it pain but God calls it favor you would see Jesus dying on the cross you call that death but he calls that the path to victory today when we go to heaven we don't just use crowns to know Jesus because there are men and elders who have crowns but when everybody lifts his hand the one who has the scar that which was a, an emblem of shame today is the symbol that is that is the signature of his majesty when Jesus appeared he he said to Thomas's doubting not by saying look at my head he said put your hand so the scars the nails you would have seen him three four days ago and you would have assumed that such a weak Jesus the foolish man at the other side of the cross you heard what the guy was saying too and the other one rebuked him and said we are criminals here for a just reason this man has not done anything so don't call your lack of food it's not poverty it's not always poverty you may be calling it poverty God is calling it training training for where he's taking you so that you will learn how to abound you will learn how to do it plenty and with nothing are we together now believers must learn how to interpret the writings of the world from the lens of the spirit otherwise you will lose prophetic seasons because they do not come in an appearance that you are used to you need courage say courage 
you need strength yes the Bible says by the strength of an ox is much good gotten the strength of an ox you see how an ox plows the field for hours yet it is making the ridges the strength of an ox is what you will need in this end time there are times you have to stand alone for many years before others join you there are times you have to see ahead of every other person maybe in your family maybe in your business and literally be there for a long time before people begin to join you one by one do you have the courage to be alone strength and courage psalm 27 1 and 3 1 to 3 psalm 27 we're looking at the second key i like the psalmist you know i've told you this thing this psalmist man i really look forward to seeing him in heaven the lord is my light and my salvation the man suffered too much till he became wise hallelujah do you know that his wisdom came on the strength of his cars the psalmist the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Verse 3. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Did the Bible not say, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise? It says, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you need courage. In this seeker-friendly world, there are many, many times you will have to walk against the odds. People do not have to believe in you to succeed. No. We live in a world where everybody wants to be free of any, you just want to be accepted by everybody regardless. No, sir. The way of the kingdom is a narrow path. There are times you will have to take certain steps because of your conviction, because of courage. It may not be the best, but that may be the path a mark for your greatness. Hallelujah. Courage strength number three experiencing new dimensions demand obedience this is a serious one obedience king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you king of kings lord of lords Faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Emmanuel. All the world is calling your name, Emmanuel. When you come again, Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face, Emmanuel. When you come again. Listen, there are some of you right now, you are beginning to enter very deep seasons. You are in a Kairos moment in your life. And it's not something that will just be for weeks. The Holy Spirit is going to hold your hand and lead you through dimensions. Sometimes you may not understand. I raise that song because I want to prophesy to you that you be strong in the midst of it. I charge you by the Spirit, be strong. You will pray alone many times. You will fast alone many times. 
the stage will not be there for men to give you the applaud but you need stamina and discipline stamina and discipline to build capacity hear me you are building capacity for the days ahead you are eating for the journey that is ahead this is the word of the lord to you build capacity the holy ghost is going to hold your hands he will draw you through realms and dimensions you have not seen he said call on me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not 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 listen there is a kind of warrior god is building it's an arsenal that the world has not seen there are hybrid spiritual combinations grace upon grace there are certain graces that were alone but god is merging them with other graces because there is a kind of warrior he's building listen to what i'm telling you uh, you, you will look at them and wonder are you an apostle are you an a prophet we, we cannot describe what exactly you are there are hybrid combinations the hunger of people is driving them to touch graces they are touching graces the grace of an intercessor the grace of a financier the grace of a prophet the grace of an apostle the grace of a watchman and that hybrid combination is forming a very dangerous believer that God will be using as a battle axe in this end time. Listen, you see, before now, before now, there are certain pathways that when men see you following, they can almost predict. But right now, you see worshippers that you do not know. Are you a musician or a prophet or an apostle? Because there are hybrid spiritual combinations. The, the hunger of men and the urgency of God's prophetic program is causing men to outsource graces. It's a dangerous spiritual combination. You will see men that are like armies. One man. One man. Because of the abundance of the graces that they have captured hallelujah so you look at that man you are seeing a Benny Hinn you are seeing a Reinhard Bonke you are seeing a Catherine Kuhlman and you are saying what kind of believer are you who combined you like this the intelligence of the spirit ah. men who don't have the voice to sing but they can receive songs like ladders from the spirit and give it to the ministry of psalmistry and say sing us into higher realms sing us let us ascend the ladders that will open to us the vistas of the spirit listen do not be afraid you started your journey thinking you are only a businessman but now you've gone through the training of a psalmist you've gone through the training of an entrepreneur you are now in the training of a prophet you too you don't even know the name of what you will become he simply calls us witnesses because the nature of your assignment oh david a day will come it is your song that will come out from your spirit but don't just call me a musician because i sing there is still a prophet there and hiding behind the layer of the prophet there is still a king that is there Can I tell you, hear me, there are some of you, God dealt with you in certain ways, but he has never used the product of your growth. He kept it. In the future, he will revisit it. There was a time you were writing songs and it stopped. And you think that that ministry has died. It has not died. God is only focusing on other trainings. A day will come, he will tell you, reach down to that weapon of psalmistry. Bring it out. I suspended it so that I would train you in the prophetic. Now that you have become a prophet with fire, bring out that weapon of psalmistry. Obedience. Obedience to scripture. Please listen. 
obedience to scripture and obedience to prophetic instructions can I tell you prophetic seasons don't just demand discernment and flexibility they do not just demand strength and courage they demand obedience to scripture and obedience to prophetic instructions whatever he says to do do it the miracle of the wine is not just in your moving forward it's in your moving as he commanded i prophesied as i was commanded not as i wanted not as i wished the desires of many will lead them to perdition because they cannot submit their desire to the obedience of scripture or the obedience of the prophetic let me show you two scriptures number one is found in Luke chapter 5 and verse 5 you must be willing to receive and honor scripture and honor prophetic instructions and Simon answering said unto him master we have toiled all the night and have caught nothing he says nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net can I tell you prophetic instructions are powerful when they are guided and administered within the jurisdiction of scripture prophecy is able to rewrite the narrative every time seasons are about to open there is always a manifestation of the prophetic when it was time for the famine in Samaria to end the prophet Elisha came and with one decree by this time tomorrow everything the climate changed prophetic instructions is it the miracle of abundant supply in Samaria is it the miracle of the axe head in 2nd Kings chapter 1 to 7 6 1 to 7 the axe head that floated it was all through and by prophetic instructions is it the victory in the days of Jehoshaphat in 2nd Chronicles 21 to 30 all of them depend on obedience to prophetic instructions let me tell you what prophetic instructions are not number one it is not manipulating people to gratify self it is not manipulating people to gratify flesh that is not prophecy it's just the limitation of humans when they are not broken and are not aligned to God authentic genuine biblical prophetic instructions come as a scriptural instruction from God through his spirit are we together now and then through a human vessel to the people for instance declaring a fast it says sanctify yourself for in three days God will speak to you he will come to you reveal himself he will speak to you prophetic instructions if it be thou bid me come he said come the excellency of prophetic instructions is that if and when they are obeyed they always deliver because God is back of it he confirmed the words of his messengers, he says. Hallelujah. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Now you understand that scripture. Behold, I do a new thing. I do a new thing in your life demands discernment and flexibility I do a new thing demands strength and courage I do a new thing demands that you obey that you learn to live by the word of God it says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now please sit down let me give you this to wrap up tonight's teaching but then this will be the ladder upon which we will take off from next week this one now is a prophetic revelation God gave me there are five prophetic seasons that are being opened to the body of Christ right now I want you to write them down five prophetic seasons the Lord revealed to me that is being opened to the body of Christ now and we must understand how to discern in the spirit and how to walk with this this is why this teaching came by the spirit number one the first prophetic season that is opening up to us right now is a season of the harvest please write a season of the harvest 
there will be such massive salvation of souls according to Matthew chapter 9 from verse 37, 38. We are in a season of the harvest. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. He says, next verse 38 now, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. That means this harvest that you see, all these souls that you see who are careless, there is a caretaker. The caretaker is the Holy Ghost to see to it that as many of them who come into the saving knowledge of Jesus, he's called the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his field. So every sinner in the mind of God is a harvest. It's not a seed growing. It's a harvest ready to be sickled into the fold. It is the bankruptcy of laborers. What is the implication of the season of harvest? I don't want to go ahead of myself. We'll leave that for next week. But the season of the harvest demands that there is a kind of training. There is an awakening that God is going to be placing upon men. Are we together? That will cause that true mighty signs and wonders so many will come to Jesus within the time that we have left. The first season that is being opened before us now, believers, body of Christ, we must discern is the season of the harvest. Are you ready for number two? The second season the Lord revealed to me is called the season of abundance of grace. The season of abundance of grace manifestations of divine abilities and enablements in a capacity that has not been seen you will see men carry weighty graces weighty possibilities ordinary men but empowered in such an unusual way the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power acts 10 38 and he went about you don't go about the difference between a madman and a destiny changer is what is on you a madman too is going about but he's not doing good he's not healing they that are oppressed of the devil there is a grace and a mantle is called an abundance of grace second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 and god is able to make all grace hmm. abound abound means coordinated towards your direction that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work most times when we quote this scripture we only limit it to finance this has nothing to do with money or finance it was referenced while he was teaching on sowing and reaping. But this is a very powerful, potent spiritual law. God is able to make all grace a season of abundance of grace. What does that mean? Unusual manifestations. Joel chapter 2 from verse 28 to 32. You know the prophecy. The prophecy of Joel, it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. 29, it says, and also upon the servants and upon my handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. 30, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Verse 32, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord had said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. This is very powerful. Abundance of grace. That means men and women will carry unusual ability of the spirit unusual abilities men like Joshua who would speak and literally the Sun would stand still hallelujah you will see men you see I was reading the other day about the church in Nigeria again my goodness 
history and technology did not combine themselves properly to do justice for us to really explore the extent of grace and the hand of God that was upon these patriarchs who have now joined the cloud of witnesses. When you study the history of the church in Nigeria, some of these are old folks and our fathers who have now transited. These men operated in strange dimensions, but they did not have the advantage of technology to have a rich capture of their manifestations. Elemental forces literally bowed to the dominion of the grace of God upon them. But you see, as great as that is, Smith Wigglesworth died living a prophecy that there is still a generation coming that will outdo every manifestation of the hand of God upon their lives. I truly believe that this is the generation. Yes, I truly believe that. Not because we are better than the generations past, it has so pleased God by the election of grace and the prophetic timing that a generation will arise, ordinary men, but with such an abundance of grace. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching